Halloween, a day for remembering the dead, a night for gathering sweets. For some, it's a harmless tradition, while for others, it's tantamount to devil worship. But where exactly does the holiday come from? Is it just the pagan festival of Samhain dressed up in Christian tradition? Does it have satanic roots? Or is there more to it than any of this? This video is about Halloween, its unlikely origins and evolution from its beginnings in ancient Rome to the holiday we celebrate today. Despite its popularity in modern narratives around the holiday, the history of Halloween doesn't start with Samhain. It starts at the Pantheon in Rome. The Pantheon was originally constructed around 100 CE as a temple dedicated to the goddess Sibylle, the patron goddess of Phrygia. When the Romans adopted the Sibylline cult during the Second Punic War, Sibylle was incorporated into Roman religion as the Magna Mater, or Great Mother of the Gods. Her mysteries were celebrated in the spring, with festivals in March and April. A little over 500 years later, in 607 CE, the Pantheon was recaptured from the barbarian hordes by the Emperor Phocas, who gifted the building to the Pope, Boniface IV. Since Sibylle was the great mother of the gods, Boniface consecrated the temple to the Christian mother of God, the Virgin Mary. The Sibylline festivals were allowed to continue, with the festivities dedicated to Mary, and eventually all the saints. And these festivals are the earliest version of All Saints Day, or All Hallows Day, which would eventually evolve into our Halloween, though it would take over 200 years for the holiday to move from the spring to the fall. In 834 CE, the church decreed that All Saints Day be moved to the 1st of November, to coincide with the Druidic festival of Samhain celebrated by the recently conquered and converted Celts, Anglo-Saxons, and Germanic tribes. If you've ever looked into the history of Halloween, this is the part of the story you've heard before. Samhain was a festival marking the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. The Druids believed that it was a time when the boundary between our world and the quote other world, the land of fairies and spirits, was blurred, and they lit bonfires to ward off these evil spirits as they entered the darker half of the year. And this is the version of the holiday that eventually evolved into what we now know as Halloween the day before All Saints Day, a day to celebrate the righteous dead who have passed on before us and inspired us in our faith. In the almost 1200 years since the holiday was moved to November, Christianity has spread around the world, picking up all kinds of traditions and evolving into what we know today. And Halloween has evolved as well, particularly in Central America, where it blended with Native American traditions to become Dia de Muertos, the Day of the Dead. But how did Halloween come to be shrouded in such controversy, particularly in American Christianity? Most churches these days don't celebrate Halloween, at least not by name. Sure, we'll have trunk or treats or fall festivals, but for most people, Halloween is the holiday that must not be named. Why is that? What is it about Halloween that makes it so scary for most Christians? Well, to understand this, we need to look at the rise of neo-paganism in the late 20th century particularly the advent of Wicca. In the 1940s, British mystic Gerald Gardner began the project of reconstructing ancient pagan rituals for use by the witches of his Bricket Wood Coven. He founded a particularly prominent line of the craft, and his work courting publicity helped push Wicca into the front of the public consciousness. Over the next 50 years, Wicca grew into a modest new religious movement with adherents across Europe and North America. And as the movement grew, it drew the attention and the fear of the Christian mainstream. Because Samhain falls on the same day as Halloween, and neo-pagans celebrate Samhain, a movement arose calling for Christians to distance themselves from the holiday, hence the rise of fall festivals and trunk-or-treats in lieu of trick-or-treating and Halloween parties. And the movement got even stronger when Satanism entered the culture. Satanism and Wicca aren't connected at all. Though in the minds of some Christians, who believe that any form of occultism is just a veil for Satan worship, the distinction is irrelevant. The original form of Satanism to rise to prominence as such was Anton LaVey's Church of Satan, founded in 1966. From our current cultural place in the aftermath of the Satanic Panic, it can be hard to believe, but the Church of Satan is actually an atheist organization. There have been a few splinter groups that have adopted theistic views, 
but those groups are ridiculed by Levian Satanists, as are all theists, including Christians. Because Satanists also celebrate Halloween, as Satanism entered the public consciousness and the Satanic Panic took off in the late 70s and 80s, Christian leaders called more adamantly for Christians to distance themselves from the holiday. So what is a Christian to do in light of all this history? Should we only participate in church-sanctioned fall festivals or chunk or treats? Should we completely withdraw from any celebrations of the holiday? Should we just throw a bedsheet over it and treat it like a ghost, something dead and only half remembered? Or is there a way to lean into Halloween without sanitizing it beyond recognition? Anderson Rierich, writing for Christianity Today, said, Christians certainly may be leery of sharing anything with modern pagans and Satanists who claim Halloween is theirs. But who gave these individuals the right to claim the holiday? There would be no Satanist if there were no Christians. Let them claim all they want. I give them nothing. I think the legacy of Halloween is ultimately one of redemption, if we choose to redeem it. The roots may be pagan, but isn't Christianity all about redeeming paganism? And redemption is about more than window dressing. It's not dressing up Sibylle as Mary, trading witch costumes for a costume based on your favorite saint, or simply changing the name from Halloween to Fall Festival. So what does redeeming Halloween look like? That's a question for another video. Perhaps by next Halloween, I'll have an answer.